Hello YouTubers, we're going to join you here and in today's video we are going to go over the January patch notes or the patch notes for the chapter 2 of Tides of War called Lightning Strikes. So the patch releases tomorrow on Tuesday, January 15th and the weekly challenges for Tides of War go live on Thursday, January 17th. But we got the patch notes today totaling 8 pages so there's quite a bit to go through. I'm not going to go through every single part of it. As always there will be a link in the description down below if you want to go and read the entire patch notes for yourself. So let's get stuck right into this. So hello Battlefield 5 players and welcome to our first update in 2019. As part of Chapter 2 Lightning Strikes, we're kicking off the year with Squad Conquest, which is an intense version of Conquest that enables more tactical gameplay between two teams of 16 players on the Arras, Rotterdam, and Hamada maps. Additionally, we're adding four new weapons which can be unlocked with the weekly challenges that will be made available during Chapter 2 Lightning Strikes. Also made several changes and fixes based upon the feedback from Battlefield community. Note that there's much more coming with Chapter 2 Lightning Strikes, including the return of Rush, a new grand operation, and more. New experiences will be delivered in future updates as the chapter progresses. So I suspect that this chapter will be going on until March when Firestorm is actually set to come out. So first and foremost, new content, new mode, Squad Conquest. Squad Conquest is a tighter and more intense version of Conquest where two squads per team battle it out over smaller, more tactical layouts of three existing maps, Arras, Hamada, and Rotterdam. These maps all feature 16 players on two teams, three flags spawning restricted to HQs and limited access to vehicles. A core belief behind Squad Conquest is a restricted number of variables to allow strategy to be able to exist. You have to be able to predict player behavior and patterns, which is reflected in all three map layouts. Clear lanes and conservative combat areas allow players to predict where enemies are coming from, where they need to defend, and how to subvert enemy movement. So this to me is going to be very interesting, especially if you have some dedicated friends to play with. It's going to be probably the most competitive mode we have right now in Battlefield. New weapons. These are some of the weapons that will be obtainable through the weekly challenges in January and February. ZK383, which is the SMG, the Model 1944, and the M1922 MMG. Also, by looking at the trailer for the Chapter 2 Lightning Strikes, we can also see the Ross MK3 Bolt Action Rifle. So these are the four weapons that we'll be seeing in this chapter. Next, we have Time to Death and Death Experiences Fixes. The name of the enemy that has killed a player is now shown in the in-game world when the player has died. This highlights the killer and helps players understand who killed them and from where, especially in crowded situations. Improved the death experience with the addition of a camera that now follows and zooms towards the killer. This will allow players to understand what killed them and the position of the killer. Improved accuracy of the visual representation of incoming bullets for other players. Tracers should now properly appear to consistently appear from the shooter, and should be clear when the victim is looking directly at the shooter. Fixed an issue with the UI directional damage indicator that delayed the indication of damage to the victim, that was annoying. Made tweaks to the UI directional damage indicator to more accurately point towards the enemy damaging the player. For me, this was all messed up, as sometimes they were shooting me from the right and the damage indicator would be coming from the left. Incredibly confusing. Next we have Soldier Fixes and Tweaks. Vaulting. Improved vaulting so that it no longer incorrectly triggers against steep hills and slopes. Improved vaulting detection when trying to vault through a window that's already broken. This will make vaulting in those cases less sensitive to tight attack angles. Fixed an issue where players could receive fall damage from vaulting over a wall. Revives. Fixed an issue where players would pick up a weapon while reviving on console. Fixed an issue where the camera would clip through the soldier while in the man down state when the player had set a very high FOV. Improved the camera behavior when a player revives a down player very quickly. Animations improved soldier ragdoll behaviors and made them more granular when killed in different poses. Soldiers killed by explosions will now blend nicely into full ragdoll when they land rather than snapping to a specific ragdoll position when landing. Players will no longer get a strange arm pose when melee hitting an enemy three times in a row, then switching to the fortification tool. Don't know why you would do this. Fixed an issue where the ammo self-supply animation could get stuck in play indefinitely. This was super annoying. Miscellaneous, the heavy weapons trait is no longer as powerful on AA guns, which previously would result in them having almost no overheat while firing. 
improved sliding activation consistency from double tap by reducing the impact of turning while sprinting, general improvements to the detection of auto peak over and auto lean. Honestly, I wish they would just bring in manual leaning, but you know, one can always dream. Prone increased the horizontal free aiming angle when prone by 40 degrees. Vehicles, there is a litany of balance changes and a bunch of things to go over here. I'm not going to go over all of them because you will all die of boredom. But one thing I will note is fixed so that all tank cannons, one hit kill, all types of airplanes, even those equipped with specializations that reduce damage from flak. That is excellent. Next we have weapons, gadgets, and specializations. So gameplay removed the extended magazine specialization for the M1907 SF and made the extended magazine equipped by default. Recoil buffer has been added as a replacement. This weapon's specialization will be reset and the means for unlocking them will be refunded. So don't be surprised if your specs for the M1907 are reset. Made tweaks to the SMG weapon positions in hip fire when firing and strafing to prevent the weapon from covering the crosshair. This drove me insane. The Panzerfaust no longer has a long delay before being able to fire after switching weapon. That's great. That was also very annoying. Reduced the damage of the Panzerfaust. The Panzerfaust is very easy to use and widely equipped as a fast fire and forget weapon. Its damage payoff was still too good against all types of armor. The damage is still high enough even against a heavy tank that a smart player can utilize a dedicated anti-tank loadout to defeat the enemy using skill and tactics. Increased throwing knives max damage range to 10 meters from 6.5 meters. Reduced the delay between two consecutive throwing knives by 40%. Fixed so that the Panzerfaust one hit kills all types of airplanes, even when equipped with specializations that reduce damage from flak, making it oh so fun to now destroy planes and actually take the time to shoot at them. There are a lot more weapon gameplay changes here, I won't go through all of them. There are also a few visual changes to weapons. Also the scope glints are now a little bit adjusted. Adjusted the size and intensity of the glints for medium powered scope and high powered scopes. Medium powered scope glints are now smaller and less intense than high powered ones. Pushed the visible distance for scope glints a bit further. They will now start being visible from longer distances, both for medium and high magnification scopes. Scope glint for medium scope visibility falls off over longer distances. Fixes the interaction prompt now properly appears when looking at a spawn beacon if it can be picked up. Fixed a bug where players were unable to switch their secondary weapon when having the M30 drilling equipped while using the rifle mode. I had this and it drove me insane. Damage. Reduced the damage of the Gewehr 43 and Selbst Ladder 1916 to 33.5 from 35. Increased the damage for the MK6 revolver. Two hit kill range is now 12 meters. Three hit kill range is 30 meters and four hit kill range is 50 meters. Minimum damage is now 22 instead of 15. Damage dropped off too steeply for the rate of fire and magazine capacity of this weapon. For weapon handling, there have been a lot of buffs to the SMGs, notably. SMGs in this update are aimed at improving the mid-range combat ability of the medic class, improved SMG sustained fire when hip firing, reduced SMG based dispersion, reduced Suomi KP-31 vertical and horizontal recoil, reduced EMP recoil pattern strength, so overall they should feel a lot more powerful powerful at their ideal engagement distance which is close quarter combat to medium range combat. There have been also some handling changes to the M1A1, the M1907 SF. There are also a few maps and modes fixes, UI, HUD and options. Fixed an issue which could result in the bleed out functionality not always working. That happened to me quite a bit. Fixed an issue where the kill card would not be visible if the player gets revived too quickly after getting killed. Made various text fixes. Hopefully this means that we will now be able to read text even if it is on a white or very bright background. Audio. Voiceovers are now played when notifying players in the man down state that you are coming to revive them. Footstep audio has been improved, making walking and sprinting louder for a better gameplay experience, while crouching and crawling generates less sound to enable sneaking and stealth gameplay. Fixed an issue where the disabled sound for planes would keep playing after repairing. Improved footstep sounds based upon what type of physics material the player is stepping on, on both Aras and Twisted Steel. 
fixed an issue which could result in the kill confirmed audio confirmation to not play at the correct moment, stability, made multiple crash fixes and general stability improvement, and PC specific improvements increased the density of the fields on Aras when playing on lower settings to not give a visual advantage to those playing on low spec PCs. So that is it for most of the patch notes. Again, link in the description down below if you want to go through the entire patch notes on your own. There are a lot of things I didn't cover as I didn't feel they impacted the game that much. And last but certainly not least, player feedback. As always, we value your input and we want you to reach out to us with feedback. For general feedback, please use our Battlefield 5 section on the Battlefield forums, which you can find by following this URL, which will be in the description down below. Now, Rush and all of these other new things that are coming with this chapter are not in these patch notes. They will more than likely be announced a little bit later down the line with another patch probably scheduled to come at the end of January. Also, company coins have yet to be fixed. I shall try and keep you all updated on this. And that's it. I don't want to go on for any longer. It's been like 11 minutes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below what fixes you are most happy came with this patch. And while you're down there, be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.